Hi everyone, today's video is going to be a little bit different than my normal video. I won't be going over a skill or a tutorial, I'm more going to be discussing some news that we got recently. If you've been following the channel for a while, you've seen me do some videos about Darkroom and I've even produced a whole course on Darkroom for the iPad over on Skillshare. And I've really been promoting it as the best batch editor that there is on the iPad um, that you could get. And that was because you could unlock all of the features in it for just a $10 in-app purchase. And then you could use things like curves and change color. But last week, I think it was on February 12th or 13th, uh, Darkroom released a new version. And that was version 4.4. And so it was not a major release, but it was a new feature release inside of the major cycle. And with that, they actually announced that they were changing to a subscription model. So the question really is, do I still recommend them when they've gone over to a subscription model, which is the thing that, you know, I've really been fighting against with Adobe, that there should be options that are not subscription based. And so do I still recommend them? There were some other features that came out in this update. Um, there was watermarking and then there was a new app icon picker, which I don't really care about a new app icon picker watermarking will be helpful for a lot of photographers. It's something that a lot of people have asked for. And so that should be helpful. But really, I'm focused on this new subscription. And is Darkroom still a good choice for photographers working on iPads and iPhones now that it's subscription based? I've been thinking a lot about this and reading what they have to say. So I have their article here that they put out on Medium. And uh, they talk about this and why they've decided to make this change. And I kind of understand what they're saying, even though I am disappointed that they feel the need to go to a subscription model. One thing that you have to understand is that development takes a lot of work. Developing an app is not a really simple and easy process. And once you've developed an app, then you have to continue to support it and make sure that it runs and work out bugs and release new features. And that's one of the statements that they're really trying to make here in this article. They show how many updates they've released and they talk about the last three years. So 2017, they released 13 updates. 2018, they did 17 updates. And then in 2019, they did 21 updates. And that is a lot of work to be doing. And the problem with not having a subscription is always that you have to keep getting new users in order to keep supporting the app, or you have to release an entirely new version that you charge your old users for again. And that's the model that everything used to work on, but we didn't used to have this constant update cycle that we have now with these app stores and having every app connected to the internet always being updated. And so I do understand where they're coming from. Development takes a lot of effort. It takes a lot of money and they need a way to keep up their revenue stream. And so a lot of companies, um, including Adobe, have turned to subscriptions in order to be able to do this. Now, Darkroom subscription isn't crazy. It's not out of this world. Let me get the exact numbers here for you. So they've said that it's going to be $3.99 per month or $19.99 a year. And so it's not crazy, but you could get Lightroom for $10 a month along with Photoshop in the photography bundle and some cloud storage. And so it's, you know, kind of a toss up. You pay four bucks or 10 bucks and one of them comes with more things. Um, and so I'm not sure that Darkroom is completely going to beat Lightroom out anymore in terms of price. $10 to unlock everything was always a steal. I always said that. And there was always the chance that they would need to charge more. But the good news really is that Darkroom is still going to offer a single purchase option to unlock everything forever. And so that is going to be now, instead of being $10, it's going to be $50, $49.99 in-app purchase to unlock everything forever. Um, and so that is still good. It's a good option that, that there's still going to be a way to purchase the software and not have to have a reoccurring payment. Because that's really what we don't want to have is just be have a recurring payment over and over again. Otherwise, we might as well be with Adobe. So I'm happy that they are going to have another option for people to purchase it. Um, $50 is kind of a steep price. Um, the $10.99 option was a great price for the app. It was a steal, but it seems like jumping up to $50 for the purchase is just too much right now because there just aren't that many features available in Darkroom yet. I've always talked about how Darkroom was enough for what I needed while I was on the road. Right, I could edit my photos and do good edits and be able to batch apply those edits and export, but there's still a lot of things that are missing or aren't as good. I know I've talked about how the highlights and shadows in Darkroom, those adjustments just aren't nearly as good as they are in Lightroom. 
And so it seems like jumping up to $50 is a bit much, but the Darkroom developers have said that they're willing that they're going to be bringing a lot of new features to the app as they implement this subscription model and this higher purchase price. And so hopefully that will be the case. And one thing that Darkroom is doing to show its good faith to users is they're not going to charge any of us who had purchased previously anymore. And so we will receive all of the features into perpetuity for free without having to make another purchase or make a subscription. And so for any of us who paid $10 or even they're saying, even if you hadn't paid the $10 to unlock everything, even if you just paid to unlock some features or just bought some filter sets, they're going to honor you by giving you the entire feature set that currently exists and any future feature sets for no additional cost. And so that really is good. They're really showing that they value their users, the users that have supported them through this part of their journey. And they're not going to mess anybody up because of that, which is nice. That's certainly not something that Adobe has ever done, right? And so they're definitely trying to show good faith for their users, which I appreciate. So then the question is, do I still recommend Darkroom as an app to use on your iPhone and iPad? Well, I'd say yes, the free version of it. Um, you can definitely use that and get some great features out of it right? You can still do all of your basic adjustments in the free version. The problem is you won't have access to curves or colors um, or watermarking, which is a new feature, right? You won't have access to those features inside the free version. But I say you should download the free version and at least try it out because it is a free batch editor and there really isn't another free batch editor that, editor that can do as much as Darkroom can in even just the free version. So I would say yes, go ahead, get the free version, try it out, you can experiment with the paid for features. You just can't export anything with them and then decide if it's worth it to you to pay the $50. I would not recommend doing the subscription because clearly it's a better deal to just pay the $50 and then have it forever rather than paying $19.99 a year or $3.99 a month. You're going to add up to $50 pretty quickly. You know, in that, you know, just a couple of years, you'll be up to the $50. So you might as well just pay the $50 if you decided something that you want. Maybe you just use the free version for now and you see what features are coming. As new features come, maybe there's something that will make it worth it to you to pay the $50 to do it. It's still going to be cheaper than Lightroom. I mean, for $50, you can basically use the app forever and get the new features. And Lightroom, you're going to be just five months in and you'll be hitting the $50. So it's still a lot cheaper than Lightroom, although there are definitely features that are missing and you don't get the desktop app or Photoshop with it. So. You know, there are pros and cons definitely to it, but I'd still say it's probably a better deal than Lightroom for people who are trying to edit primarily on their iPad because it's still a better app than Lightroom on iPad. Um, but if you're doing a lot of work on desktop, then, you know, it's probably worth it for you to be on Lightroom right now and then rather than trying to switch everything over to your iPad. I know that I'll keep using it because I will have all the features as an early user of it. I'll have all the features forever, so I'll keep using Darkroom for sure, and I'll try and keep and I'll try and keep teaching things in Darkroom for those of you who are using it and for new users as they come into it. But let me know in the comments what you think. Um, it's a little disconcerting to me to see one of these companies go over to a subscription model. That worries me because we really don't want to see a lot of these companies that have been producing the alternatives to Adobe just go in and fall into the same uh, trap that Adobe has been falling into. So. Hopefully we don't see other apps go this way. I know that um, Assembly, that which I've talked about before and done some tutorials on, they use a subscription model now, but they also gave those of us who paid early the features. Um, and so there's, yeah, there, there's hopefully there won't be a real trend towards this subscription model with the alternatives apps because I would hate to see Affinity go subscription um, or anything like that because we really want to be able to own our software keep using it. Affinity, I think probably is not. They've really come out strong against the subscription model. And so hopefully we're safe with them. But um, it's concerning to see Darkroom make this move, but at least they're still offering that option to do a single purchase license, which makes me happy because I think that is a really important option to keep giving people. Some for, for some people, a subscription makes sense and that's what they want. And it's nice to offer that to them, but it's good to still offer something that people can just purchase outright. And so those are my thoughts. Please give me your thoughts on what you think about this um, in the comments below. Are you using Darkroom? Um, have you already paid for Darkroom? And so you'll be able to continue using the features. Or are you thinking that you will purchase Darkroom and uh, pay the $50? Let me know what you're thinking about that in the comments below. And I'll see you in the next video.